Hola, I'm Margaret from Moon in Spain and today uh, Moon in Spain is actually in Portugal. So we just crossed over the border. I'm in the town of Vila Real de Santo Antonio. I'm standing right at the Guadiana River um, and on the other side of the river is Spain, the town of Ayamonte. Um, the Guadiana River actually begins in the autonomous community of Castilla-La Mancha in Spain and it runs about 450 miles until it runs out into the Atlantic Ocean right here where we are um, in between Spain and Portugal. So it runs sort of as a natural border at times between the two countries. So I'm going to show you a tiny bit of the town here, Vila Real de Santo Antonio. And tomorrow we're also going to visit the municipal market so you can see the beautiful fish market that they have here um, in this town. And then we'll continue on traveling to other little towns on the way to Lisbon. Um, so please remember to like this video if you enjoy them and also to subscribe to us and if you subscribe with a bell um, then you'll get some news every time we post a new video. So let's go. Okay, so right now I'm standing in the main square of Villarreal de Sant Antonio. The name of the square is Marquez de Pombal who was a very important, um, we could call him a prime minister of Portugal in the 18th century. Um, the town of Villarreal de Sant Antonio was destroyed during the 1755 earthquake in Lisbon. Um, so a lot of the architecture here is the Pombalin style architecture. Um, so that's when the square was rebuilt. So here we have the city hall. Um, we also have the main church and it's also just a beautiful square where people can come out, sit outside, enjoy something to drink. Um, there are a lot of shops here you know, selling different artisan items, like things made with cork. Um, and also there are a lot of shops here that sell um, linens, towels, tablecloths. Many people come over from Spain to purchase these items. Um, it's always been a very important um, place for trade all throughout history. So you, here we have the main church right here. You can see some of the um, artisan outdoor shops as well and here we have the city hall also there's also a monument here in the center of the plaza that's dedicated to one of the kings of portugal don jose the first and then you can see also here some of the nice outdoor terraces as well people are sitting outside enjoying the beautiful weather and something to drink and here you have a nice view um, of the main commercial street here, pedestrian street um, in the center of the town. So filled with all different shops, restaurants, outdoor cafes. Um, if, actually, if, if you've been to Lisbon, um, it was very similar to one of the um, main streets, pedestrian streets that is down in the Baixa area in the center of the city of Lisbon. There's actually right now um, we have some Fado artists performing out on one of the outdoor terraces of the restaurant. So if you don't know, Fado is the traditional music from Portugal. Okay, so now we're at the main entrance or one of the main entrances to the municipal market here in Villa Real de Sant Antonio. So we're going to walk through. I'm going to show you the beginning part of the market. It's a small market, but it has an amazing fish market um, that we'll walk through. Okay, so just walking into the market, they have the herb here. That's a special herb for the snails. So they have the bags of snails here the little, little tiny baby snails and then some lupini beans some excellent olives and then some dried nuts dried figs 
more herbs. There's the herbs one the, that they use for the snails, fresh oregano as well. More some fresh fruits and vegetables as well. And some fresh beans here, just to give you an idea of what the inside of the market looks like. So then the other entire half of the market is all fresh fish. So we have sardines here. Very large anchovies, uh, mullet. We have some sea bass as well. And here on the other side, we have shrimp, prawns, langostines, and crab as well. And here they have the fish that's already cut and prepared to make a calderada, which is a fish stew made with potatoes, tomatoes, and onions. Have some monkfish as well. And skate. You can see here all of these sardines. Sardines here, says sardines from the Algarve coast. And also mullets, uh, carapau, and then you can see calamari, we have octopus, and we have the black swordfish as well, more shrimp, some more shrimp, and then look how cool these are, carabinero, which I'm not really sure how to say in English. They're a type of prawn. You can see the color of those. And here you have more monkfish. What's oh, a type of monkfish? Tamboril. You can get a great rice in Portugal. One of my favorite dishes is the rice with the monkfish. And then here we have a large corvina, which is a type of sea bass. Some more anchovies here. If you want, you could buy the head of the corvina, and then a ton of octopus as well. But here you can see the great tuna from the Atlantic coast. Here where we are, there's a fresh tuna. You can also buy the eggs of the tuna, or the skin, or you can buy the dried tuna as well. And here we have some wild, a small wild, um, another type of sea bass, dorada. Some anchovies, a pargo, which is a snapper fish. And also some fresh sole as well. You can see all the crates of fish waiting here to be sold still. So here's some skate right here. Oh, no. Raya, and then uh, mackerel. There's some more sardines of various sizes. And then here's another corvina, which he said is about 48 kilos, so that's over uh, 100 pounds. Some more sardines. Now here we have some cured sausage. And some excellent cheese selection as well. Okay, so we're actually going to have lunch um, right here at a restaurant that's connected to the market. So we're always very excited to cross the border and have a mini, which is a small beer and then some great olives and excellent bread. Of course, was the best bread. Okay, so we, we had to order sardines and we also ordered the grilled chicken. But here we have a jarriño do vino branco, which is a little small pitcher of white wine. 
Okay, so we've been served our grilled sardine, and they're grilled on an open flame. And what you do in Portugal with the sardines is that you put the sardines on top of the bread so that the bread soaks up the juice and the flavor of the sardine. And then after you're finished eating the sardine with your fingers, of course, uh, you put olive oil on the bread and eat the bread. And then we also are served with the sardines, uh, patatas al murro. Um, they're just basically boiled potatoes and then you smash them um, with the back of a fork. And so usually sardines come with a salad. Today it was served with a gazpacho. So there's gazpacho here um, with bread also in the gazpacho. So now we're just gonna wait for the chicken while we enjoy our sardines. Okay, now here we have the frango asado, um, the grilled chicken. It's something that you absolutely, these two things, the sardines and the frango asado, the chicken are two things you have to eat in Portugal. Um, the sardines obviously in the summer, but you could see the grilled chicken. It's served with french fries and a salad as well. Sometimes you can get the frango al piri piri, which is the frango with the spicy sauce, or you can always ask for the piri piri um, if it's not prepared with it, if you like your food spicy, which I do. Okay, so here the sardines are perfect. They're so fresh. You can see this eat the meat right out of the sardine, and then the juice and everything goes onto the bread. We eat sardines with our fingers. Mmm, they're so good. They just came right out of the market, right out of the sea to the market, to our plate. And it goes so well with the gazpacho. It's sort of like a chunky gazpacho, and then there's pieces of bread in it, but it's perfect to clean your mouth after the sardine. And then the white wine we have is from the Alentejo area, the man just told us. So it's a perfect, really cold, perfect white wine that you can't buy in the stores. Um, he just buys it directly from the winery. Okay, so this is something that I only started to re-eat in Portugal. It's a carob cake made with orange. So when I was a little kid, my grandmother, she was, she, she was a professional cake maker and she'd make huge chocolate cakes, but every once in a while she would um, deceive us and make one out of carob, which for me was hard. But now I've learned to love carob and we'll actually drive by some trees later on um, where you can see how the carob grows. But this is a traditional sweet here from the south of Portugal. So you can see the carob um, with bits of orange in it. So then we went down to the beach after lunch to enjoy the great water down here in Villa Real de Santo Antonio on the Algarve. Um, and also when you're on the beach in Portugal, you always have to have a bol de Berlin, which is like a donut. Um, it's stuffed, you can have it either plain or you can have it filled with cream or chocolate or here you can have it with carob. Um, or they even had one this year that was filled with a passion fruit. Um, but you have to have one always when you go to the beach in Portugal. Okay, so right here in front of me, you can see what is the castle of Castro Marim. Castro Marim is actually the first town that you um, run across when you cross over the border. Um, we're right here at the very southern border of Spain and Portugal. So this is the first town uh, you cross. So this is the town with the most history here on the border. You can see the castle there. It was used um, by the Templar Knights, also the Order of Christ. Um, besides being a border here of Spain and Portugal, it was also a border um, between the Christian the Christians and the Arab troops as well. And then over here off in the distance, you can see the bridge. That's the bridge that you cross over when you're coming from Spain into Portugal. You can see the salt mines that are just outside of the town in the marsh area. Also the entrance to the castle that's built up on the top of the hill. And then some of the beautiful homes and streets um, they're all decorated with beautiful flowers. Um, you'll find a lot of camellia trees in different colors that are de decorating 
um, the front of the homes and the sidewalks as well throughout the town. So here as well, this is another entrance into Castro Marin. You have a sculpture of um, one of the Templar knights, um, which eventually became the Order of Christ and the castle behind it. And then off to the right, you have the fortified part of the town as well. So you can just see here the name. So this is where we stay um, because it's a perfect place to stay um, in our van. And it's a nice small town that you can enjoy, walk around, have a coffee, um, and just enjoy this small part of history here along the border. There's also an album um, that's done by Paco de Lucia, who is a very famous Spanish classical guitar player. And his mother is actually from this town. Her name was Lucia, and she was born in this town of Castro Marin. So he has an album with the same name, but in Spanish, Castro Marin. So here you will also be able to see a fountain with the Star of David, um, which will remind us of the Jewish communities that were here in the Algarve region, um, in the towns of Faro, Tavira, Portimao, here also in Castro Marim, and also in Alcutim, which is a town that we will be visiting next on our trip. Hola. So we are now um, about 35 minutes north of the town of Villarreal de Sant Antonio and the town of Castro Marim, where we were earlier. Um, we drove up what is basically the oldest highway that goes right along the Guadiana River. There are a couple different ways to get to the town of Alcutim, which is where we are now. We're still in Portugal. Um, but across the Guadiana River, you have the town of San Lucar de Guadiana. Um, you could see that there's no bridge crossing over the river here. You have to take the taxis to go back and forth. Um, there's only once a year that there's another way to go across. Well, there's actually a zip line as well that goes across, um, but they make um, a platform bridge every year during what's called the um, Festival of the Contraband um, that they celebrate here in these two towns. So the border in Spain we refer to as the Raya and the people that live on the border towns or in the border towns are called the Rayanos. It's the longest uninterrupted border in Europe. It's about 755 miles, um, the border that runs north and south and then also going to the, towards the west as well between Spain and Portugal. Um, so you have the both towns here with a lot of history. I'm gonna show you just a little bit more. Okay, so here you can see the town of San Lucar de Guadiana. The sun's coming in a little bit strong right now, but you can see the main church. And then up at the top, there's the fortress, the castle. And here you have a nice view of the river. You can see a lot of boats. There's a lot of water, sports and activities that people come up here to practice. Here you have the main church here of Alcutim called Sao Salvador and you can see from down below I'm standing right down here next to the river so you can see the town built up on the top actually in the year 1876 there was a flood um, the river flooded and went the water reached the town so what where the main plaza is and the church and then here just in front you can see the castle here of the town of Alcutim. So you can see the Portuguese flag up at the top. Here you can see one of the taxis that goes back and forth all day long between Spain and Portugal. So it's on its way to San Lucar de Guadiana. So here you have a different perspective. I'm just a little bit further up, standing at one of the main churches or the main church here in Alcutim. You can see the castle up here at the top and the river, I'm looking south from here. Actually, just south of here, you'll find some Roman ruins in old Villa Romana. 
Um, this area was actually inhabited prehistorically um, during the Neolithic age, um, but then it was inhabited, Alcutim was, um, by the Romans, the Visigoths, then the Moors, and eventually the Christians. So the history in Alcutim um, goes back quite far. The town of San Luca de Guadiana dates back about to the 15th century. And basically the town was founded um, because of all the trade going on um, on this side, the Portuguese side of the river of Guadiana. So here you can see what is the main plaza here in Alcutim, not looking down towards the river, but it's a small town, it's only about 3,000 people. So we're actually still here, we're in the area, the region of the Algarve. Um, but now we'll be continuing on driving up what was the old Roman road towards the town of Merta. There's a little um, market going on. You can see the beautiful colors. Um, restaurant here. And another church. Okay, well now I'm just standing at the outside of the town of Alcutim. You have the castle behind me. Um, the castle here, the history dates back to the Romans. It was also used by the Moors, and eventually it was even passed to the hands of the religious and military order of Santiago as well. Um, so the history in this town runs very deep, and like I said, we're going to continue on our travels, um, continuing on the old Roman road. Um, but I hope you enjoyed our short visit here in the Algarve. Um, to the town of Villarreal de Santo Antonio, Castro Marín, and now to the town of Alcutim with views of the um, Spanish town on the other side. So please remember to give a thumbs up if you enjoy the videos and also subscribe um, with the bell so that you can get a notice when we post a new video. So see you soon. Hasta pronto.